اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی اہل بیت الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین اما بعد فقط قال الحکیم فی کتابه المجید و فرقانه الحمید بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قل اعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق و من شر غاسق اذا وقب و من شر نفاسات فی العقد و من شر حاسد اذا حسد الحمد للہ وی ہیو فنشڈ سورہ الناس اینڈ وی اسٹارٹیڈ اور پروگرام فار دا لاسٹ فرام دا لاسٹ سورہ آف دا قرآن سو وی ہیو کمپلیٹیڈ اینڈ وی ڈسکسڈ ویری امپورٹنٹ ایشوز ان سورہ الناس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس سورہ الفلق and i will try my best to complete one surah in my every lecture so today we will complete this surah al falaq again we have very important issues and topics in surah al falaq so i will expect you to listen the recording we are sending recording to you and uh, try to repeat these aspects and what we are discussing in our uh, sessions and in our lectures So first of all we will see the translation of al falaq I will also like to request you to always read 3 to 4 times translation of every surah which we are going to discuss for example next week we will discuss surah ikhlas qul huwa allahu ahad this is very very important surah although all surahs are important but there are some very uh, important meanings and principles being discussed and introduced in uh, some surah so uh, today we are discussing surah al falaq and then before coming to the class i will expect you and request you to read three and four time the translation of every surah so at least we may know that what kind of issues we are going to discuss today We will start this Surah Al-Falaq. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak from the evil of that which He created, from the evil of the dark night when it overspreads, from the evil of the women who blow on the knots, and from the evil of the envier when He envies. This is related to jealousy. So jealous person and then if someone is jealous of you so exactly this is evil and this is sher so we are going to discuss in detail all these three or four issues that i am going to mention for you so surah falaq qul a'uzu bi rabbil falaq i seek refuge in the lord of the daybreak from the evil of that which he created from the evil of the dark night when it overspreads from the evil of the women who blow on the knots and from the evil of the envier when he envies so these are the points and important aspects of this surah in the translation that we have already seen and um, so first thing i would like to again repeat you that even in surah annas qul a'uzu bi rabbin nas malikin nas ilahin nas you remember that we discussed in detail about seeking protection of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about refuge and uh, that we are seeking refuge uh, from to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why because we are it means when quran is saying to prophet muhammad that you should seek refuge and protection and shelter of me because uh, we are unable to fight and resist with the evils by himself by ourselves we cannot do this because we are vulnerable we are weak we cannot fight with the evils and problems and difficulties we are facing in our life so this is why allah says you need my help you have to uh, take my protection and seek my protection so you will be able to combat with the evils and uh, anything which is harming you so we have to believe that god alone can protect us from any calamity this is very important issue if we don't have faith on god if we don't understand that god alone can protect us then he will not protect us 
we cannot seek shelter. So uh, our belief, our iman should be very firm and sound. Uh, the last thing is we also need to know that material means and resources are not able to protect us, protect us. Anything in the world is not able to protect us. Quran says that only and only God can protect you and save you from evil things. So this is what we have already discussed in detail. Now we are going to see what is falak. The first word was in the translation, falak. So Rabbi Falak means bringing out the light of dawn by splitting the darkness of night. This is the literal meaning of Falak, that bringing out the light of dawn by splitting the darkness of night. So this is the literal meaning we can understand. And then to bring into being everything created in the world appears by splitting something. You see, the first one was literal meaning. The second one was the intellectual meaning and actual meaning. It means that Allah is created. He created everything. And we understand in the creation that everything which is being created is uh, basically appears by splitting something. If you pay attention to each and everything, you will see the split in it. So how we can link literal meaning to the uh, this meaning, we can e easily understand. The third is earth and heavens also in the beginning were one mass, then they were broken and parted. So this is also Quranic verse that in the beginning, how this universe was created. So Quran has already mentioned about this. Then there was again the split between this earth and heavens. So what is Falak? So we understand the meaning of Falak today. Let's see what we need to know. We have four important concepts today. One is Ashar. What is evil? It is very important for us to understand and to know the meaning of evil. Because we all the time, we are using this term and we are uh, facing this issue issue of evil. So it should be important for us to know the meaning of evil. And the second thing is anfasato fil uqad. It means evil of magic. So this is evil of magic we are going to discuss. And third is hasad, which is evil of jealousy. And fourth is evil of dark night. So this is basically in the second uh, position when we see translation of this Quranic verse. First, evil of dark night. Second, evil of magic. Third, evil of jealousy. So we are going to discuss these four basic concepts in this surah. So let's see, has Allah created evil? So first issue is normally when we see the translation of this Quranic verse, you see, I'm going to just uh, back to the original Quranic verse. When you translate this, so we think that it means that we should seek protection from the evil uh, which was created by God. Allah has never created any evil. So apparently we understand from this Quranic verse. So we should be very careful when we are translating it. So I'm going to explain that exactly when we talk about evil. So the heading is, has Allah created evil? So this is uh, what we understand. Number one, Allah has not created evil. We must know and we, we must believe in and we must understand that Allah has not created evil. We cannot ascribe anything, any evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one. Number two, it is he who created everything in a good manner. You see, this is a translation of Quranic verse. Quran is saying itself, not at one place, but at different places, Quran is saying to us that it is he, it is God who created everything in a good manner.
so everything created by allah is good so we cannot say allah has created evil allah has created something which is not good so this is what we need to understand the third thing is but evil appears from the creatures created by allah so evil is coming out from the creations from the created being or creatures which is created by allah subhanahu wa taala so there is a difference between these two things sometimes we say that evil is created by allah sometimes we say that no evil is not created by allah evil is appeared from the uh, creatures created by allah so we understand this one now i am going to give you example you will better understand what we are saying so the fourth point is for example knife can cut your hand and fire can burn your body while both are created for good and useful purpose so you understand when we talk about uh, the evil or something which is bad or wrong doing so we cannot ascribe any evil to allah and misuse of anything can be evil for you for example if i ask you so why knife is created we cannot say that knife is created to cut our hand we cannot say that allah has created fire just to burn everything is it possible can we believe in this uh, notion can we understand that the meaning and purpose behind the creation of fire is to burn everything no it is not possible so fire was very important for us and is very important for us but if we are misusing fire or mishandling fire then it can become evil for us then it, it can become sharp for us so while both are created for good and useful purpose so we should seek protection from evil of everything created by allah so this is a best thing the last one is so we should seek protection from evil of everything created by allah now you see the, there are two examples for example there is knife or fire so fire can burn us fire can burn our house so when we are seeking protection from evil of everything created by allah from the fire created by allah so what we are thinking so basically we are praying to allah subhanahu wa taala oh allah protect us from the destructive aspect or evil aspect of this fire so we will be able to save and protect ourselves from fire or anything which can harm us so this is the this can be the result of our prayer so so what is evil now again the question is what is evil uh, it is very important to understand the nature of evil because there are different things which are evil and we need to categorize and we need to distinguish from each other one is number one so what is evil we are discussing about the definition of evil so number one any loss injury trouble affliction etc so if you uh, have any loss or injury or trouble or affliction so this is basically we can say this is evil this is bad thing this is wrong this is corrupt so this is what the first another thing is any means which cause losses injuries and affliction so uh, adam is saying that voice is choppy so uh, can you please tell me everyone can you hear me or not it is okay from zain raza and then uh, it is clear so maybe there is a problem from adam from your side so please check it uh, your connection and everything so i will continue again and then if uh, there is a choppy voice then you will get the uh, okay so uh, you will get the recording also so so any any means which cause losses injuries and affliction for example hunger disease fire war accident scorpion and snake 
you see i mention uh, so many things here nothing is evil in itself just pay attention what i am saying so first one is direct loss or injury you can say this is evil if you are injured you can say this is evil if you are in grief for example so you will say that this is evil but in second category we are saying that these things are not evil in itself but they can cause uh, harm to us so this is why these things are also evil any means which cause losses injuries and affliction pay attention to word cause anything which cause uh, any means which cause losses now hunger you see hunger in itself is not uh, evil but hunger is evil because it is inflicting harm to us it is uh, disturbing our health it is destroying our health disease in itself not harm fire in itself not harmful or evil war if you see the battle and war so you will see that there is no problem at all but because of war we see lot of destruction because of war we see that how much people suffer so because of this suffering we say this war is evil accident accident in itself is not evil but because we injure in the accident because we suffer loss in the accident this is why we say that accident is evil otherwise accident is not evil in itself scorpion if scorpion is not stinging us biting us or similarly snake so scorpion in itself is not evil snake is not evil snake is evil when snake is stinging us so harming us so this is why we have to distinguish uh, these two uh, categories the third is evils in deeper look now we have to see this very interesting aspect means they do not seem evil in the first sight even some evils give pleasure and profit so sometimes it is very difficult for us to say something that it is evil because apparently it seems very good very nice and it give pleasure to us it is profitable to us we are taking benefit we are becoming happy so how we can say that this is evil but if you go and see in the deeper look you will understand that you were considering it a very good thing but this was in fact and uh, in deeper look you will understand that this was evil for us for example uh, unbelief we say or polytheism those who are kafir those who are uh, not believer and any kind of sin when we commit sin when we do something wrong so we don't think that this is bad some some sins are very uh, uh, helping us or it's a good pleasure for us but the sin is very harmful for us in the end we understand that how much uh, it was not in our benefit for example uh, in our childhood in your age so sometimes you are you may waste your time you are playing uh, just watching internet movies television and you are not working hard you are not studying well so now you are enjoying but the day will come then you will feel that you why you wasted your time you will feel that this was evil this was not good habit at that time that you have not studied in your time and now when time have passed now you cannot uh, return back to your early age so at that time you will feel that this was pleasure for you but now you understand no this was evil for you so that this is important for us to understand that uh, uh, some things are apparently very good but in deeper look this is harmful for us 
and this is evil. Next thing is anything can become evil, even knowledge and worship. So can you imagine that our knowledge can also be evil? Even knowledge is very good thing. A study is very good thing. Everyone is saying that and even worship. If you are praying, if you are fasting, if you are uh, following the commandments of God, so it is very good. If you are studying Quran, again, it is very good. But everything can become evil for you. Even knowledge can become evil. Why? Because if you are misusing this knowledge, if you are, for example, deceiving people because of your knowledge, if you are hiding truth, if you are basically uh, destructing others or you are deceiving people. So this, this is what we say that knowledge is also evil about worship. For example, now you, we are studying Quran and now we have a very good discussion. Or this is sabab, no doubt in it. But this can be evil for us if we are becoming proud. And then if we are, if we are uh, showing of other that uh, we are more knowledgeable than you. So you see that if we have some moral issues because of our prayer, because of our fasting, so then this will become evil for us. So we should be very careful. Sometimes very positive things are there. They can be evil for everyone. Another thing, second is absolute evil does not exist. Okay, but does it mean absolute evil does not exist? It means you cannot show me anything in the world which has no good aspect. Everything has good aspect and evil aspect. You cannot show even single thing to me that you say this is only and only evil. So it means there are good aspects and there are bad aspects, evil aspects and good aspects. Third is difficulties and hardships make us perfect. So you know, this, uh, this is very important for all of us to understand that difficulties and hardships make us perfect because we think sometimes we are facing problems we are facing difficulties and we think that this is evil for us. Yes, of course, it can be evil for us. But if we are uh, using in right way, then it will help us to perfect us. It will help us to improvement. So, for example, uh, we say it depends how we take them. If we, for example, if we fail in the exam. so. Uh, if we fail in the exam, then it is evil for us. So there are two types of approaches. So depending how you perceive it, so you may develop negative thinking. You will say, oh, I have failed in the exam. So because my teacher was not good, I was not given enough time in the exam. Or, But you are not accepting your own weakness. So you are always blaming other because of so and then you may as leave to study uh, for example you say that no I, I will not study more i will not attempt another exam so this will be uh, evil for us what i would like to say here that if we facing problems difficulties and something something happened to us which is not good for us so it is better to see ourselves, to assess ourselves, to see where are our shortcomings, to see what are our weaknesses. The last point is many hardships teaches us patience, steadfastness, humbleness and submissiveness. This is very important for our children because hardships and problems and difficulties that you will face in future and maybe you are facing now. So they are teaching us. So we need to know that if we face any evil, whether we are learning something from evil or not. So patience means that we need tolerance. We, we should not be impatient. So we should not become angry. So in future, 
we are facing a lot of problem and we uh, people are coming and criticizing us and we need to practice to listen criticism and maybe other person is well wisher for us so we should not always think someone is criticizing us that he is my enemy so this is what we when we are studying quran from the beginning now you you should try to develop and cultivate these moral principles in your life this these principles will very very helpful for you in your future in your future life otherwise if we are not paying attention to these principles we will really suffer so now we experience and we observe our children they have lack of patience they have lack of tolerance they are very much impatient and then they become angry very soon and fast if parents say something to you so you become angry because you don't want to listen it is very good place quran is teaching us that we need to be a good listener if someone is talking to us criticizing us then we should think that this person especially when they are your parents and your community members then they may be your well wisher they are not your enemy so normally in the childhood we think that if someone is not appreciating us and criticizing us then he must be our enemy it doesn't mean that this person is our enemy so we need to learn and we need to have these moral principles in our life the quran says now you see the saying of quran and then you may not like something which in fact is for your good and something that you may love in fact may be evil god knows but you do not know you see how much this quranic verse is beautiful quran is saying that you may not like something which in fact is for your good and something that you may love in fact may be evil so sometime in our life we think that this is a very good uh thing and then this is not good basically we are considering is good but sometime this is not good this is bad for us so uh especially in our childhood when we are going to school when we are going to call it several time it is happening in our life in the beginning when we start something uh, like bad habit for example smoking or anything else so in the beginning we think this is good for us but this is in fact this is bad and sometime we love something but in fact this is evil so we need to understand exactly uh, exactly the moral principle which is being mentioned here now the second thing quran says that we need to seek protection of evil of dark night why quran said about the evil of dark night you see that evil of darkness what does it mean most of the crimes and acts of wickedness are committed at night number 2 harmful animals also come out at night number 3 Ra- raiders attackers come out in the dark of night and plunder and destroy settlements four men is more vulnerable in the darkness so so adam you are writing something and i will inshallah answer you after that uh, so this is evil of darkness this is not a issue that whether we are accepting or is not now this is a place first of all to learn these principles in order to uh, accept or uh, to implement in our life we need more uh, practice we need more uh, things to do for this but you are if you are saying that how difficult to accept and act upon it so this is what i am saying that first of all this is our now duty to understand what quran is saying second is we need to think and ponder over uh, further to accept it to understand what quran is saying 
But if we don't know what Quran is saying, that we will not be able to act on it. Anyway, so evil of darkness is important. So man is more vulnerable in the darkness. So uh, evil of some special creatures, evil of the women who blow on knots. Now this is another chapter and topic about black magic. Quran is talking about those who were blowing on knots, who were uh, performing kind of black magic. So what uh, Quran basically says about this, evil of some special creatures and evil of the women who blow on knots. A knot that is tied on a string or piece of thread. Number one, magicians usually tie knots on a string or thread and blow upon them. So this is very famous ritual. Again, I will repeat it. This is whenever magicians are performing magic. So they are just uh, trying to play with the objects. They are having their special rituals for this. One of the very attractive and influensive and important is uh, to tie knots on a string or thread and blow upon them. The third is the third is since help is sought of the devils and evil spirits or stars to influence the other person evilly, it has been called kufr, unbelief in the Quran. So we understand Quranic point of view. Quran says that the one who is performing magic is kafir. This is kufr. This is not allowed for anyone to learn magic. But for example, if you want to fight with magic, if we want to respond to, if you are learning only and only to fight with magic or to defend yourself, then you are allowed to learn magic. But you are not allowed to learn magic to harm anyone. Because when we talk about black magic, so this is, we use supernatural powers for evils and selfish purpose and negative use of energies and uh, powers. So we uh, normally, evil-minded people are doing this. Why they do this? To harm others, to deprive from peaceful lives. So uh, this is what we say. So women are more involved in the act of magic. You. Pay attention to this fact because women are more involved in the act of magic as compared to males. Now, the Quran accepts the effect of magic to some extent. You again understand that what Quran, Quranic point of view about the magic, inshallah, whenever there is any Quranic verse related to magic, I will explain in its own context. Today we are discussing only this Quranic verse. So Quran is accepting the effect of magic to some extent. This is important to know that this is to some extent partially Quran is accepting. Not fully, but partially Quran is accepting. So, uh, yeah, you are writing that... Uh, Males are also performing magic. So I'm not saying males are not. I'm saying women are more inclined to do this. I'm not saying that men are not doing this. Males are also doing this. But as compared to males, we see that women are more uh, involved in it, in these things. But there are, again, so many causes. I'm not going into detail. There are psychological issues. So those who inspire from so-called... Oh, so. Second one. So, Quran is not accepting as a whole, but partially. Number one. Number two. This is also possible that the act of blowing on knots is performed for psychological effect. You see, uh, you are right. Again, uh, so you are writing women believe more than men. This is exactly and very correct uh, as compared to men. Women are more inclined to accept and believe in magic. So, uh, 
again uh, i will come back to what i am i will discuss your question later on so this is also possible that the act of blowing on knots is performed for psychological effect please uh, stop writing and listen what i am saying this is also possible that the act of blowing on knots is performed for psychological effect for example if someone is performing magic and just psychologically convince me that you are uh, we are performing magic against you so this is only psychological there is no uh, physical effect of uh, of magic for example if these women are blowing on knots it doesn't mean that they were doing magic it doesn't mean that magic is right thing it doesn't mean that there is a effect of magic but psychologically it is possible that they are going to harm you but not physically so uh, i am going to just discuss uh, dr shagufta what you are saying just keep your question i will just discuss this what you are saying that uh, i am talking about the second point is first of all uh, first point is quran is accepting that in to some extent magic is possible again and again i am repeating if you are saying that there is a bad effect so quran is accepting to some extent but this is also possible that act of blowing on knots is performed for psychological effect what does it mean let me give you example and this is very good example for example i am sitting here and i am sick now and i come to know that someone is sitting in the other room and who is performing magic against me so then psychologically i will become more sick there is no effect of this magic because this is fake nobody is there but if i know that someone is doing magic for me then psychologically this will be harmful for me so which is harming me is my perception my uh, approach not magic so for example if three or four women is sitting in front of me and they are performing magic magic so this will psychologically convince me that i am under influence so this is so this is normally uh, happening uh, in uh, psychological from the psychological point of view so more than now the third point more than 99 magicians are fake and play psychological game i will repeat again and again more than 99% magicians in the world are fake and play psychological game they are just uh, doing something to convince you to inspire you psychologically the last uh, the last one is those who inspire from so called magicians they are intellectually and emotionally weak again and again see those who inspire from so called magicians they are intellectually and emotionally weak if i am intellectually and from my religious point of view if i am strong and emotionally i am strong i will not accept any uh, influence or effect of magic yes 1% can be real my understanding from the quran is that 1% can be real but how we can understand this one person we have found this one person how we can maybe there is nobody is there but this is only possibility we are talking about the possibility but 99% is reality and it is fact so those who inspire from so called magicians they are intellectually and emotionally weak so uh, yeah if you think that this point is funny so anyway just you pay attention that what i uh, mention here now we have if you believe in fake superstitious activities this will affect you what does it mean can you understand this a uh, beautiful aspect 
that psychologically, if you believe in something, then this will affect you. If you are not believing, this will not affect you. Hadith. You see hadith. What is good and bad omen? Bad omen means that you are predicting something. You see any object. You see any animal. And then you predict something bad. So this is related to So it is related to the hadith. Hadith is beautiful. Bad omen is up to you. How you perceive it. If you take it easy, it will be easy for you. And if you take it serious, it will have serious impact on you. And if you disregard this, it will have no effect on you. Can you imagine how much this hadith is beautiful? Normally, in every culture, we have bad omens. And good omens. I will give you some examples. Those who have Pakistani background. And Indo-Pak background. They have their own bad omens. Those who are from Iranian culture. They have their own bad omens. For example. In some cultures. Friday 13 is a misfortune day. Black cat. They, they are linked with the witchcraft. And then breaking a mirror. So seven years of bad luck and owl looking through the windows, for example, putting new shoes on the table. There are bad omens. So in every culture, can you hear me? Uh, is there any problem in our voice? Raza is saying that we cannot hear. Okay, Raza, uh, I don't know if you have any problem from your side. Okay, so you see, I'm again going to read this hadith. Bad omen is up to you. How you perceive it, if you take it easy, it will be easy for you. If you take it serious, it will have serious impact on you. And if you disregard this, it will have no effect on you. So this is why we understand uh, this. Now, evil of uh, some particular creatures, evil of jealousy. Now we are going to discuss about jealousy. Just see how much this aspect is beautiful. What is the meaning of jealousy? Hasad means that a person should feel unhappy at the better fortune, superiority or good quality that Allah has granted to another. If, if your friend has better fortune, superiority, good quality, he is more knowledgeable, he is more wealthy, then you feel unhappy. This is jealousy. And next point is, and should wish that it should be taken away from the other person and given to him, or at least the other one should be deprived of it. So one is sometimes I want that, for example, if your friend has some qualities, so you will like to get these qualities, or, or you will say, May Allah deprive him from all these qualities. So this is basically a jealousy or this is called hasad. Now evil of jealousy. Number one. What are the characteristics of jealousy? Disliking perfections of others. We don't like to see any good thing other in other people, in our friends. Whether they are knowledgeable, whether they are uh, more uh, achievements if they are good in their study, whatever you can think about perfections, you don't like this. Number two, efforts to adopt others' qualities is good. It is always good to adopt uh, the qualities you find in other people, in your friends. But if you are wishing them to deprive from these qualities, so this is hasad. But if you also like to have these qualities, this is very good thing. Third is sign of narrow-mindedness and lack of capacity. It means that we are narrow-minded. We have lack of capacity. So this is why we cannot accept this. The fourth is first murder on the earth was due to jealousy. You know, Habil and Kabil. So uh, Habil, Kabil killed his brother because of jealousy. So this is why we have uh, 
Now this fourth point, the first murder on the earth was due to jealousy, disliking perfection of others, sign of narrow-mindedness and lack of capacity. Jealousy is a root of many sins. So if we are jealous person, then it means in the future we will perform and we will commit several sins because of jealousy. So this is a base of our sin. So this is why it is important for us to address this issue. Second is never acknowledges and appreciates others. So if I am jealous person, then I will not acknowledge your abilities, your qualities, and I will never appreciate you. Second, third is jealous person always hides truth. For example, if I am jealous of you, then I will hide your qualities. I will not disclose or introduce you in proper way because I am jealous. Several times it happened with me. For example, I can notice, okay, someone is not introducing me in a proper way. Why he is not introducing me? Because of jealous. Because he is jealous of me. He is not ready to introduce me properly. So one quality or characteristics of jealous people is that they always hide truth. The fourth one is keeps enmity and hatred in, in hatred in their heart. So this is again we see about the jealousy. And another thing is always wishes for the downfall of others. And jealous is one of the root cause of black magic. So we have already discussed this black magic. And jealous is jealousy is one of the root causes of black magic. If we perform magic and to harm any person, why we want to harm? Why we want to inflict harm to others because we are uh, jealous of this person. So jealousy is the base of our wrongdoings. We should be very careful about this. Now, we have beautiful Quranic verse. Quran says, or is it that they are jealous of people over what Allah has given them of his bounty? If Allah is blessing us, so we should not be Jealous from this person. Now, what should be our reaction? For example, I am jealous of you. So what you should do? What is your duty? What is your responsibility? What Quran says about this? Number one, one should have trust in Allah and the faith that unless Allah so wills, no one can harm him in any way. No one can harm you if Allah is with you. So you have to have firm belief and faith. This is number one. Number two, one should have patience over what the jealous person says and acts. So if someone is jealous of you, then you should be very patient over what the jealous person say and what uh, he performs. Number three, should not start behaving impatiently so as to be degraded morally to the level of the jealous person. Your level is different. We have a beautiful hadith from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, So you are saying that, but if you don't know that someone is jealous of you, so if you don't know someone is jealous of you, then it is okay. Because from how you understand this, you understand from the signs and symptoms and you see that, okay, uh, the effects are there, signs are there. If there are no signs of jealousy, then you will say that, okay, nobody is jealous of you. So it is very easy. Okay, now... Uh, so these are the when we are discussing these qualities, this will also enhance our ability and knowledge to understand who is jealous of us. If we know what is the nature of jealousy, if we know what is the essence of jealousy, if we know the characteristics of jealousy, then it will also empower us. 
it will give us new insight to understand that someone is jealous of you or not the third point is should not start behaving impatiently so as to be degrade morally to the level of the jealous person hazrat amirul mu'minin ali ibn abi talib we have a beautiful saying of imam ali just listen what imam ali says imam ali says that if someone is jealous of you it proves that you have a higher position and higher status for example if i am jealous of you what does it mean it means that your position is high your status is high it means you have abilities you have knowledge you have some qualities so this is why someone is jealous of me otherwise why i should be jealous of you so this is very good hadith from imam ali i didn't mention this hadith but i now recited for you that what imam ali alaihi salam says the fourth point we should always maintain our dignity and practice piety if someone is bad to me i should not be bad to this person if someone is doing bad to me i should not react badly to this person this is what quran teaches us and the uh, what should be our reaction and the one should free one's mind of every thought about the jealous person and should disregard him altogether i know that this is very very difficult but it is very important if for example i am jealous of you you should try and learn to uh, free your mind of every thought and you should disregard this jealous person believe me if you are able to do this then you will further uh, improve in your life you will have more achievements in your life but if you will always think about this jealous person and if this person is always harming you and affecting on you then even this will affect your life you will not be able to achieve your goals so this is important to disregard these people always try to disregard if someone is saying to you someone is performing magic you just disregard just learn to disregard this this will very very helpful for you in future and think if we are jealous now i am jealous person what should i do how i can overcome this problem this is the moral issue and how i can take away this moral issue and problem from my soul and heart now there are five beautiful points i am mentioning this then our program will be finished today think about the harmful effects of jealousy on our body and soul and learn the lessons from others those who are jealous people we need to learn what happened with them and how they destroy destroyed their life and then we should also think about this that if we are jealous so if i don't like your qualities so it is affecting me i am under stress it is affecting my health so i have to think about the harmful effects of my jealousy i am not harming other person i am harming myself i am not doing bad to other person unless but until i am doing bad to myself first i am bad to myself and then i am I can be bad for others so this is what we need to think the second point avoid taking any action on jealous thoughts for example if i am not satisfied with you if i am jealous of you then there are two stages one is this is just my thinking but sometimes i am acting upon my jealous thoughts this is very dangerous i have to stop myself to do something against you in my action by my action third is increase your efforts to adopt others good qualities always try to increase your efforts to adopt the qualities of good people only and only focus if you find any quality any good thing in other people then you must try to put your all effort to get and adopt these qualities your focus should be on the qualities 
and on the contents. The fourth one is compare your efforts and achievements. Sometimes we have lot of expectations and our efforts are very less. With less efforts, we want to achieve a lot. No, it is not possible. We have to see if we are not gaining something, if we are not achieving something, we have to see our efforts. If our efforts are not uh, too much, we have to increase our efforts. Then we will be able to. Otherwise, if our expectations are high and our struggle is low, then we cannot do anything. And the last is think about your weaknesses and shortcomings. Always learn from the beginning that what are your weaknesses, what are your shortcomings. You should not always try to figure out the weaknesses and shortcomings of others. We should always try to learn this very important Quranic moral principle to learn and to uh, see what are our weaknesses and what are we are lacking in our life. But if you tell the person why they said something about you in a bad way to someone. So again, uh, we just generally we discuss this issue. That's depending on how uh, the situation and condition is. But the general message of the Quran is that if someone is doing good, bad to you, you should respond to this person in a good manner. As we have a lot of stories from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the people used to hurt him, used to harm him, but he always uh, replied them in a very good and proper manner. And because of his morality, because of his truthfulness, because of his good behavior, we see that Prophet Muhammad was successful in his life and in his mission. So think about your weakness and shortcomings. And the last hadith, this hadith, we are going to finish our lecture on this hadith. Hadith is jealousy burns faith as fire burns dry woods. It's a beautiful hadith. And if we have this moral issue and problem, then it means we are going to burn our faith and destroy our faith. Thank you very much. All attendees are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star 6. So if you have anything to contribute or just to discuss, just to talk, just to ask any question, you can come on mic one by one. Uh, we have very little time left. So uh, I wanted to complete this surah. So if you have anything to say, so Dr. Shugufta is also there. She may also contribute and if she wanted to say something, she can come up yeah. or she can write or... Yes, Tahreem, if you have question. Yes, Zainab for Black Magic. So what is your question? Okay, I will uh, I will send you just to let you know that on YouTube I am uploading these lectures. If you are typing "Understanding the Quran for Children" by Doctor Nasir Zaidi, you will find the lecture. But I will also send you the link. Uh, no, Doctor Shugufta, I cannot listen you, and. Uh, your mic Your mic is not open
you have to unmute yourself. Please see if you can do. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, you said uh, earlier that uh, polytheism or... Muhammad, some... just introduce yourself. Are you Muhammad? Yes, I'm Muhammad from okay. Windsor. Okay, yeah. You, you previously mentioned that um, uh, polytheism is evil. Is that what I heard? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but what, So does that mean that people f uh, who are polytheists are evil? Yes. Or the faith Poly itself? You know, polytheism is basically shirk. Shirk means that you are associating something with Allah. So this is also evil. But this evil, you cannot understand this, that this is evil. When we say that you have to be Muslim, you have to have faith in oneness of God. So, for example, if we don't believe in oneness of God, how it can be evil, this is another issue. But uh, we believe that uh, if we are not believing in God and if we have no faith in God, then... Uh, yeah, this is harmful for us, maybe in this world, on the Day of Judgment. Um, yes, uh, sorry, uh, Muhammad. Yes, of course, those who are performing black magic, they are doing sin, and this is major sin, and this is gunah -e kabira Okay, uh, Muhammad, do you want to say something? Hello? Yes? Oh. Um, so if someone um, spreads evil, like evil talk about you, how should you respond to them? So if someone is uh, having uh, evil talk to me, then, uh, for example, uh, if we are in the school or somewhere else, so we should, there are different ways to uh, face this, this issue and problem. We, we can ignore this person, we can disregard this person, or we can, uh, we can uh, re respond to this person in a very good manner. Uh, but this is, you know, this is depending on the situation and the person who is basically teasing you. You have a lot of ways to deal this situation. So uh, uh, to, I'm not going to discuss this aspect, maybe another time. So we will discuss in detail if we have this particular issue and someone is uh, telling bad to me that how many possibilities are there and how many options are there. We can deal this. Yeah. So let me take Dr. Shugufta's question. She's asking most of the questions uh, I got that women think black magic is done on them because many good things are not happening to them. They ask that I should check and tell them whether is it true or not. You see, uh, this is, you can say uh, many women are just believing, for example, if something is not happening good with them so they this is what i was saying that women are more uh, involved in these issues and then uh, in imaginations and in, in superstitious aspect but there is no solid ground logical ground for this that if you are facing problems and difficulties in your life or not happening good so it doesn't mean that someone did jadu. Uh, how you can say this? How we, we need to believe this? For example, if something happened with, with you and same thing is happening with me. So why I am not believing that someone did ma black magic and you are believing this? It means that we are may not be intellectually and from the faith perspective. We are, maybe we are weak or we are more working with our imagination. This is why we incline to 
like uh, magical activities and we are thinking that there is an effect and influence of magic in our life. So you are asking that why when they, they say that this is a sin, so why they are performing black magic? So this is not related to black magic. So all of us are committing sin in our life. And some are uh, performing a lot of sin or committing sin. Some are less. But uh, they should not do this. But if our iman and faith is weak, then this is why we commit sin. And then we are not well educated. We are not well nurtured. So our religious education is... So this is why we have this program. This program will really help us. My This is my belief that this will prevent us from committing so many sins in future. So, yeah, this is why we see that some people are still doing. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Ji, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, you also said that um, um, uh, not believing in Allah is uh, evil. Sorry again? Uh, you also said that not believing in Allah would, would be uh, would be evil, right? Yeah. Or okay. Of so, um, what if people who who like believe in science would they be considered evil? No, they they believe in. Uh, for example, they believe in science. So uh, this is something else. For example, if you believe in God. And then if you believe in science or anything else, you can believe in it. But uh, when you say that you believe in God, so there is a particular meanings for this. So if we are not believing God, and then if we are believing, uh, not believing on anything like any other God, or we are not involving in shirk, then there are serious issues uh, from different point of view from moral and ethical and spiritual aspects so we believe that we are incomplete then we cannot perform our duties being a good human being so but it doesn't mean that everyone who is not believing in god he is uh, always doing bad so sometimes we uh, apparently we don't believe in god but uh, we believe in the essence of god we are doing what God is saying, but apparently we are not saying that we believe in God. So we have to separate uh, these two things from each others. So sometimes people are very good. They apparently say to you that we don't believe, but they are really, uh, they are doing what God is saying. They are following commandments of God, uh, consciously or unconsciously. So this is different issues. Okay. Okay, Zainab, do you have any question? Yeah, Kiran, you are saying hardly anyone would know how to do it in real people. Take advantage of a weak faith on Allah. Yes, um, I agree with you. You are right. And even I don't know if anyone is there in the world who really know uh, magic in real sense uh, it is very difficult to say we can say just this is a possible this is possibility but we cannot say that exactly someone is there so but 99 percent are fake i have no doubt in it any other question
you say uh, i am just uh, i am just reading the question of uh, dr shagufta from australia she is saying how can i reply except to recite these two last sura because the jealous person is uh, covered and attacked from behind but amil said to them that magic is done on them you see um, this is always happening in our communities we should be very very careful these amilin i don't know if i understood your question properly or not please explain for me my understanding is that those who are called amil so they are performing magic and we are consulting them uh, this is their profession this is important for them to try to connect everything with the magic if you go to for example particular uh, so called amil what he will do if he is saying no no there is no magic you go so how he will be able to charge you and get money from you this is his profession he has to do this this is we have to be careful that how much we are intellectually accepting this so my understanding is that uh, this is what we are facing and this is happening in our communities in our families and we should be very careful about that Uh, with your permission, I want to say something. Yeah, of course, please. It's just about um, Zain was asking about uh, a question: K, if evil people, or uh, like the Muslim people, or the people those who don't believe on Tawhid, are evil. So, I just want to add in a sim- in the simple words that they are actually affected by the evil they are not necessarily evil all the people those who don't believe on god for example hindus or any polytheist they might be very good people very good human being but not necessarily e- evil people they are actually the target of evil the target of shaitan we which is not let them understand so not necessarily all the mushriks are evil and how to answer and uh, as we're talking about how to answer the ladies yeah i think i be asked that question a lot um because our lady especially from you know indo pak as you said that we believers and that we we thought that oh jab, when something bad happened is evil either an evil eye or it's magic so we have to we can just tell them that believe on allah and no magic is stronger than allah's power and there is no magic allah doesn't have the antidote for it so if you will believe like for example allah said that if you will uh, read the four quls or ayatul kursi any magic can be um, like you can uh, what do you say cure you can cure by any magic so if you are saying uh, just do your wuzu say uh, say your ayatul kursi and all four quls or these two quls mouth then and believe in it believe in it if you are not believing you yourself is doing shit because you're thinking that allah is not powerful enough more than allah's um, verses are not powerful enough to cure the magic because you are saying ayatul kursi you're doing sadaqa you're doing mouth then you're saying mouth then and uh, even after all that you're still thinking that magic is even more powerful it's still harming you So you should be very strong yeah, about it. Thank you. Uh, just just to add one thing that what Kiran you are saying that uh, these Quranic verses are really very important. If there is any effect of magic on us, then uh, we are really taught that we. Uh, um, yeah, please mute yourself. That uh, Kiran, please uh, off your mic. Yeah. So we have to recite. Uh, these especially these two sura qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas and a'udhu bil falak the historical background of this two sura are also and only and only related to the magic which was done for prophet muhammad peace be upon him and then shia and sunni both are accepting the historical the reason of revelation of these two sura so if we really are affected by magic for example but this is almost impossible i am again saying uh, 
even uh, only one percent chance uh, that someone is uh, have done magic for us. Otherwise, so for example, if there is any effect, we have to have firm faith that these uh, these ayat and surah will remove the effect, will take away the effect. Second thing is more important. Kiran, you also mentioned a little bit that sometimes there is no magic, but we are psychologically convinced that someone did magic to us for us. Then, uh, then these Quranic verses, Ayat al Kursi, Kul Auzu bi Rabbin Nas, Surah uh, Hamd, also that these are basically uh, helping us to psychologically. Uh, cope with the situation, psychologically strengthen and empower ourselves, psychologically convince ourselves if there is any power, this power is with God. No one has any power in this universe. And believe me, I am just talking to you practically, not talking to you just because of my knowledge or intellectual approach. This, if you are really doing this in your life, you will see the result. And this is very important. Thank you. Yes, Kasim, you want to say something? Okay, so uh, I'm... Uh, yeah, Kasim, if you want to talk, please, then I will finish the session. Hello. Okay, so uh, so I'm going to close the room now, and then inshallah next week we are going to discuss in detail Surah Tawheed, Ikhlas, Kulhu Allahu Ahad, and then we will see some beautiful messages and principles. Uh, so till that time, Khuda Hafiz.